July brings us a night sky of contrasts, from glowing gas and newborn stars to ancient clusters and elusive clouds of dust that barely reflect any light at all. Whatever gear you're using and whichever hemisphere you're under, there's something here worth capturing. I'm Tim and you are watching Cosmic Captures. When you are planning your imaging nights, the Moon will once again set the rhythm. This month, the first quarter falls on July the 2nd. The full Moon, also known as the Buck Moon, rises on July the 10th. The last quarter comes on July the 18th, and the new Moon is on July the 24th. To help you time your sessions, the Moonlight Astrophotography Planner, also called MAP, is now updated on my website. It's free to download and gives you a quick visual overview of the month with tips for both broadband and narrowband imaging. July is the peak season for nightscape imaging in both hemispheres. In the northern hemisphere, the classic Milky Way arc graces the eastern horizon, making it ideal for dramatic panoramic shots. In the Southern Hemisphere, the core of the Milky Way is high and bright, providing excellent opportunities for capturing vertical compositions. At higher northern latitudes, noctilucent clouds can still show up in July. And if you're shooting deep into the night, keep an eye out for meteors. Two minor showers, the Delta Aquarids and the Alpha Capricornids, both peak around the end of July. The numbers aren't huge, but the occasional bright fireball can add unexpected magic to your Milky Way shots. And if you're ready to move beyond nightscapes, the Milky Way is packed with deep sky objects, each with its own story, shape and challenge. M17, also known as the Omega Nebula, is an emission nebula in the constellation Sagittarius located about 5,500 light years from Earth. It lies within the Milky Way's dense star forming region and is part of the same massive molecular cloud complex that also includes the Eagle Nebula I presented last month. The nebula is shaped by the strong radiation and stellar winds of a group of young hot stars. These stars are forming the gas into a curved area of glowing gas, which we see as a bright swan or checkmark shape. In reality, the nebula is more like a hollow bubble seen from the side. A field of view between 0.8 to 1.5 degrees works well to frame the main arc along with the surrounding emission. Narrowband imaging really shines here. Mono shooters can use all of their narrowband filters and one-shot color cameras will do well with dual narrowband filters, though stars can get dense in this area, so some tasteful reduction helps. M17 is one of the few emission nebulae with a measured mass, over 800 solar masses of ionized gas. This makes it one of the most massive H2 regions visible from Earth. It's not just glowing gas, it's the visible surface of a stellar nursery, still shaping stars today. It's also a great choice for smart telescope users, because it's bright, detailed and rewarding, even with short exposures. From here, we leave the rich clouds of Sagittarius and head towards a target that looks very different. Not a cloud, but a clean, distant ring. M57 is a planetary nebula in the constellation Lyra located around 2300 light years from Earth. It's one of the brightest and most iconic planetary nebulae in the night sky, easily found between the stars Sheliac and Sulafat in the Lyra constellation. At first glance it looks like a delicate smoke ring hanging in space. But that ring is actually a glowing cylinder of ionized gas, seen nearly face on. It formed when a sun-like star reached the end of its life, shedding its outer layers into space and leaving behind a white dwarf at its center. 
a field of view of around 0.3 to 0.6 degrees frames the nebula well, especially if you want to include the faint outer halo, a shell of gas expelled even earlier in the star's evolution. This outer structure is faint, but adds depth and story to those who go deep. M57 responds well to narrowband imaging, particularly O3 and H-alpha. But there's a rewarding signal in S2 as well. A dual narrowband filter works great on one-shot color cameras. But the Ring Nebula is also a strong broadband target, with rich star fields and fine detail even under moderate skies. Although it's small, it's still a fun object for smart telescopes, because it's bright and easy to isolate even at short focal length. And from here, we leave the glow behind and enter the shadows towards a faint reflection nebula that barely whispers its presence. VDB 123 or Vandenberg 123 is the brightest part of a delicate dust complex in the constellation Serpents, about 1600 light years away. It lies near the galactic plane, surrounded by dark nebulae and faint reflection patches. At its core, a single star lights up a wisp of interstellar dust, creating the soft blue glow of VDB 123. But the real beauty of this region lies in the wider field, with tangled dark lanes, scattered starlight and subtle gradients that come to life in deep wide field images. A field of view between 1.5 and 2.5 degrees works well to capture the full extent of the dust, including the surrounding wisps and shadows. Broadband imaging is key here. This is not a narrowband object. The signal is low, so long integration times make all the difference. Even under dark skies, expect to spend at least 10 hours to pull it out of the background noise. This isn't a good match for smart telescopes. It's too faint, too broad and demands longer integration than most smart systems are designed for. If you enjoy quiet details and slow rewards, this region is worth exploring. A prize for those who slow down and dig deep. Have you noticed how deep sky objects come with all kinds of strange names? M17, NGC 6752, IC4628, VDB123. That's because there are over 25 deep sky catalogues used by astronomers today. The Messier catalogue is the most famous, created in the 1700s by Charles Messier to track things that were in comets. His list became kind of a who is who of bright galaxies, clusters and nebulae and is now beloved by amateur astronomers worldwide. The NGC or New General Catalog came later, a massive 19th century effort to expand the list to thousands of objects, many still widely referenced today. The IC or Index Catalog extended the NGC even further. Many emission nebulae and clusters fall into this category. And then there's the VDB, the Vandenberg Catalog, a more niche list that focuses only on faint reflection nebulae. And if you're curious, there's more. Barnard's Dark Nebulae, Sharpless H2 regions, Linz Bright and Dark Nebulae, and the Rogers, Campbell and White Oak Catalog for Southern Hemisphere Emission Nebulae. Each catalog reflects a different chapter in the story of how we explore the night sky. Would you be interested in a video that explores how the different deep sky catalogs can actually help you to plan your imaging? Not just by naming things, but by revealing what kind of objects you're dealing with. Let me know in the comments below. But now, let's head back to the July night sky and an object that gives us a rare glimpse through the dust into the heart of our galaxy. M24, also known as the Sagittarius Star Cloud, 
is one of the richest star fields visible in the night sky. It's not a nebula or a cluster, but a rare transparent window through the dust of the Milky Way, revealing a dense cloud of stars about 10,000 light years away. That makes M24 a bit of an oddity in the Messier catalogue. Most Messier objects are discrete targets – a nebula, a cluster, a galaxy – but M24 is more like a cosmic viewing hole. What we are seeing isn't a single object, but a window into the structure of the Milky Way itself. The region spans about 1.5 degrees of sky and is ideal for wide-field imaging. For example, a 135mm lens or a small refractor paired with a DSLR or mirrorless camera can reveal an incredible level of detail, including embedded star clusters, faint nebulae and subtle dark structures like Barnard 92 and 93. M24 is best captured with broadband imaging techniques. But the area is also rich in H2 regions, which means you can even capture the area with narrowband techniques. But don't overlook the pure star field, which is a spectacle on its own. And even with moderate integration times, the results can be spectacular. Smart telescopes can also get surprisingly good results with a wide field lens, especially on systems like the Dwarf 3. A short focal length setup brings out the context and depth that makes this region so special. And now, let's head back south again to an object that doesn't just sparkle, it dazzles, one of the most overlooked treasures in the southern sky. NGC 6752 is a massive globular cluster in the southern constellation Pavo, located about 13,000 light years away. It's the third brightest globular cluster in the sky, yet few observers outside the southern hemisphere know its name. Visually, it's striking – a dense core of ancient stars spanning about 20 arc minutes across. The cluster contains more than 100,000 stars and has been the subject to intense research into stellar evolution and dynamics. A field of view of around 1 to 1.5 degrees works well to capture both the core and the halo. While it's possible to shoot this target at long focal lengths, it truly comes alive when framed with a bit of breathing room, letting the surrounding star field set the scene. Broadband imaging is best. There's no nebulosity here, just starlight and the beauty of gravitational order. Integration times don't need to be long, but attention to color balance and star handling will reward you with a rich glowing result. This is a great target for smart telescopes. Its brightness and compact size makes it easy to frame, visually satisfying even with modest setups. And from this stable ball of ancient stars, we turn to something wild and alive. A sprawling nebula in the tail of Scorpius, full of chaotic structure and ionized glow. IC4628 is a sprawling emission nebula in the tail of Scorpius, about 6,000 light years away. It lies within a vast star-forming region near the galactic core, a busy stretch of sky that is rich in gas, dust and young stars. But this nebula often flies under the radar. The nebula glows with ionized hydrogen, sculptured by the radiation from nearby young stars. Its shape, loosely reminiscent of a crustacean, earns it the nickname the Prawn Nebula. But beyond its name, this is a region of intense stellar activity, a nursery where stars are still forming, surrounded by pockets of glowing gas and dark dust lanes. A field of view of around 1.5 degrees captures the full nebula, but you can go tighter if you want to highlight the central ridges and arcs. Narrowband imaging works beautifully here. H-alpha dominates, but sulfur-2 and O3 add structure and depth and you can combine them into different color palettes. 
One-shot color camera users can go far with a dual narrowband filter, even on the less than perfect skies. IC4628 is well suited to smart telescope users, especially if your system supports dual narrowband filters or longer integration times. And it responds well even with modest resolution, thanks to its contrast and defined shape. It's not the most famous nebula in the south, but it is still rewarding, especially for those who want to practice their narrowband skills without diving into extreme faintness. If you want to see all of this month's targets at a glance, head over to my website and download the updated CAP file. It includes extra details on framing, filters and even smart telescope suitability. So you can plan your imaging session more easily. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, many of last month's targets are still beautifully placed in the sky. As for this month's lineup, between all the M's, NGC's, IC's and VDB's, enjoy your astronomical alphabet soup.